Lung cancer is the commonest cause for death due to cancer in the world. In India, lung cancer is one of the top 5 cancers that are diagnosed and treated and lung cancer is not just a cancer which occurs due to smoking. Dear friends, we need to remember that lung cancer has got many reasons, many types and many types of treatment protocols depending on when they are diagnosed. So all of us have two lungs, the right and the left and the lung is definitely one organ which is required for us 24 hours a day. It is a medium of exchange of oxygen for carbon dioxide from our body. It is also a medium of exchange of other gases which are outside in the environment inside our body. It could be carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide or even the lot of smoke that you get from vehicles or from the factories. So from the time you are born to the time you die, you are going to be breathing. So when cancer of the lungs occurs, it is basically going to affect the way you breathe and the way you exchange oxygen from the outside into your body. So the cancer of the lungs can be divided into two major categories. One is the non-small cell lung cancer and the other is small cell lung cancer. Why are they classified like this? Basically because of the way these cancer cells occur under the microscope. The small cell lung cancers classically used to be called as the smoker's disease. It's also called as the oat cell lung cancer, wherein many of the smokers used to be diagnosed with small cell lung cancer. Small cell lung cancer has become a distinct entity from the commonest type of lung cancer that is the non-small cell lung cancer. Non-small cell lung cancer is then divided into two major categories that is adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Most of the patients with lung cancer present to us with symptoms of cough, blood in cough which is otherwise called as hemoptysis, breathing difficulty, chest pain, chest discomfort and sometimes vague symptoms which basically point out towards the fact that the cancer would have spread to nearby structures such as shoulder pain or even swallowing difficulty. A lot of patients develop hoarseness of the voice which probably is because of the involvement of a nerve by the lung cancer. So any of these symptoms can bring the lung cancer patient to the oncologist. After the patient comes uh, to the oncologist, we basically first help to diagnose whether this patient has non-small cell lung cancer or uh, small cell lung cancer by doing a biopsy of the tumor tissue. Once we get to know the subtype of the lung cancer, we then do a imaging or what we call as a scanning to basically get to know the stage of the lung cancer. The most common scans that are done to diagnose and stage a lung cancer are the CT scans or the PET CT scans. After getting to know the stage of the lung cancer, it becomes very simple for the treating oncologist to decide whether the patient has to be treated with the intent to cure the lung cancer or control the lung cancer. You would all be aware of the stages of any cancer. There is stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4. That can then be subdivided into early lung cancer, locally advanced lung cancer and metastatic lung cancer or lung cancer that has spread to other organs. The early lung cancers are still curable with today's strategies. The strategies usually use surgery, radiation and chemotherapy. So basically the cure is to be decided by a multidisciplinary oncology team which sits together and designs the best treatment protocol for the patient so that cure can be achieved. Then we have the locally advanced lung cancers. Locally advanced lung cancers are where the tumor has spread to the nearby organs apart from the lungs and in these cases most of the time we offer a combination of radiation and chemotherapy for the patient and in a small set of patients we can then probably progress to even do surgery which is not always 
possible, but it is possible if we get very good response with radiation and chemotherapy. Now, with the latest advent of immunotherapy, after giving chemotherapy and radiation, if the patient responds well to this strategy, then patients can be maintained with immunotherapy, which helps to control the disease, not just for a few days, but for a few years, potentially. Then we have the metastatic lung cancer, that is the lung cancer, which could have spread to the bones, the liver and many other structures of the body, basically rendering the cancer to be incurable. Even in these cases, we have advanced immunotherapy, we have even chemotherapy that are still an important component of treatment in many cancers today and then we have targeted therapies. So for metastatic lung cancer, we have immunotherapy, targeted therapy and chemotherapy. We have seen many patients in today's era where patients with metastatic lung cancer can live beyond 5 years if they respond to any of these therapies that I mentioned just now. So to summarize. Lung cancer is definitely conquerable today. It is not as lethal a disease at you, that it used to be maybe two decades ago. It is a lot more easier to treat lung cancer today than before. However, it remains to be one of the most difficult cancers to manage in today's oncology practice. So what is the best way to defeat lung cancer? Like I said, prevention is better than cure. A large component of uh, lung cancer is because of things which can be changed or altered by the individual. How do you do that? Smoking. Not all lung cancers are caused by smoking, but a large number of lung cancer patients are heavy smokers. So quit smoking so that you can reduce the risk of developing lung cancer. A large number of patients with lung cancer happen to work in certain occupations which expose them to a lot of toxic chemicals. Changing the job or probably using better protective equipment to avoid inhalation of these toxic chemicals can also help in preventing lung cancer. A very small percentage of patients develop lung cancer due to hereditary reasons. That means the genes could have been passed on from the family members. In these cases, it is possible to help uh, these patients by genetic counseling to avoid their progenies or their children for developing lung cancer. 